Hi and welcome to Gaffy's Grinds. Uh, this is video number nine in our organic chemistry series on fuels. Okay, um, so before we start, a quick reminder of just some tips for using this video. Make sure you try and eliminate all distractions. So get your phone, put it in another room or turn it off. Just do something so it's not going to ring or, tech or buzz and distract you from your work. Uh, close any other tabs you have open on the computer that you're using if you're using the computer to watch this again It just makes sure you won't get distracted and Lastly make sure that you do the questions and the tasks when I uh, when you when I ask you otherwise You're not going to learn very much from this video. Okay, so this video today is going to be on fractional distillation now, fraction, Fractional distillation is the process we use to separate crude oil into its more useful components now it's a type of distillation. So in our previous video, we talked about distillation, simple distillation of just one or two different liquids. And it separates liquids based on diff have them having different boiling points. Well, this is a much more complex version of the, the, that fractional distillation. This can be used on a large scale to separate crude oil into hundreds of different liquids with different boiling points. It's really, that's why it's important that you watch the last video before you watch this one, you watch them in order because it's like a story. You were building on one thing into the next video. So it's really important that you do watch them all in order and don't just start here. The video before that, we talked about properties of uh, hydrocarbons. And again, to really understand what's going on here and how the different fractions are separated, you do need to understand the different properties of different alkanes and why short-chained alkanes have different properties so long-chained alkanes for example that's really important so again that's video seven if you haven't watched that you're not really going to understand this properly until you've watched that so my advice is to go back and watch that before you continue with this video okay so i'm going to try my best to do the drawings on one note here today with my pen my stylus um it's not as good, it's not as easy to draw as it is on the whiteboard, but I'm going to give it a go today, okay? So, we have a substance that's called crude oil. Okay, so crude oil is usually kept in barrels or containers, but when the fractional distillation process is going to start, it's going to be added to like a large tank. Okay, so in the tank, we put this crude oil. Now crude oil, is a very viscous substance. So in video seven, we learned what that word means, viscous. So what does viscous mean? So speak your answer to the screen on three. One, two, three. Okay, I'm hoping that you said viscous means something which does not flow very easily. So an example of this would be honey. Honey does not flow as easily as water. If we pour them both out of a container, the water will pour very quickly. It will flow out of the beaker very quickly. The honey will flow much more slowly. So the honey we say is more viscous. Well, crude oil is an extremely viscous substance. Okay, now, so crude oil, what is it? Well, we've learned that crude oil is a mixture. It's not a pure substance. It contains many different substances. It is a mixture. And it's a mixture of hydrocarbons. What are hydrocarbons on three? Speak your answer to the screen, please. One, two, three. Okay, I'm hoping that you said hydrocarbons are substances which contain hydrogen and carbon only. Okay, so um, it's a mixture of hydrocarbons. Now, what are the differences between the different hydrocarbons? Well, it's all got to do with the size of the molecule. And when we're talking about sizes of the molecules of hydrocarbons, what we're really referring to is the length of the chain. So we've got short chain, and long chain alkanes, so short and long chains. And the chain we're referring to is just a, mo uh, a molecule and the amount of carbons in the molecule, okay? So, for example, this here represents a quite long chained alkane. This is long. Um, whereas this one here represents a short chained alkane. Short, okay. And then there's obviously some in between and there's some even longer again. So different lengths of hydrocarbons. 
is what's in the crude oil, different lengths of hydrocarbon chains. So we've got short and long chains. And the different lengths of chains are going to have very different uses because they're going to have different properties. So what we want to do when in the fractional distillation process is we want to take our crude oil mixture and we want to separate it into the individual components. Now I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. I need a bit more space at the top. Okay. Now, so we've got short and long chains in the mixture. Now, what is different about them that lets us separate um, the crude oil? Well, how does fractional distillation work? How, do, how does it separate the different substances? So on three, how does any distillation work? How does distillation help us separate different substances? On three, one, two, three. Okay, distillations help us separate different substances based on them having different boiling points. So the short and long chains here have different boiling points. Different boiling points. Now we learned the reasons for that in video seven. If you're not sure of the reasons why that, you need to go back and watch video seven. Okay, so to separate these substances use it, uh, that have different boiling points in crude oil, we use this process called fractional distillation. Fractional distillation. And a fraction is really just one of these molecules. So each one of these molecules we call a fraction. So for example, this one here with one, two, three, four, five carbons, that would be a particular fraction. That would come off at a certain boiling point. Okay, so we say that the different hydrocarbons are collected in different fractions. So hydrocarbons are collected in different fractions. And that's why we call it fractional distillation in different fractions. Now, a fraction is going to become more clear in a second. Sorry, this is a bit messy, but okay. So, in short, again, crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons. It has short and long chain hydrocarbons shown by basically the squiggly lines here. The longer the line, the longer the chain. And the different chains have different boiling points. So, short chain hydrocarbons, do they have lower or higher boiling points? On three, one, two, three. Short-chained alkanes or short-chained hydrocarbons have lower boiling points. So in the ranges of 20 to 30 to 50, those kind of boiling points. Whereas the much longer chain alkanes with say 20 or more carbons in them, those are gonna have higher boiling points. So up on the one to two to three to 400 level, 400 degrees Celsius, okay. So let's, um, let's talk up a little bit more about the process. So in the process of fractional distillation, the container of crude oil is piped out. So we have a pipe at the bottom of the container, which is going to pipe the crude oil out. The crude oil is going to go in to a burner. Okay, so the burner here is going to heat the crude oil as it passes through. So these are flames. Okay, so we say step one is the crude oil gets heated. Crude oil is heated. Now, what temperature is it heated to? Well, it's heated to about 350 to 400 degrees Celsius. Now, when heat is added, what will happen? To most of the hydrocarbons, the short and the longer chains. What's going to happen to them? On three, one, two, three. I'm hoping he said step two is they are going to evaporate or boil. They're going to turn into gases. He said that, well done. So we get evaporation. Now from there, if they are evaporated, most of the hydrocarbons are going to have turned into a gas. If they have reached a boiling point, they will have turned into a gas. They then flow on the move into what we call a fractioning, fractionating column. So it's a very tall tower-like structure. Okay. 
that looks like this. Okay, now. And on the tower at different levels, there are pipes where product can be piped away. I'm not sure how many of these pipes I need to draw. I might need to rub some of them out after. And at the top, there is a pipe, the very top, and at the bottom, there is a pipe. Okay, so we call this tall tower a fractionating column. It's a column because it's a narrow, upright structure, and it's fractionating because it fractionates crude oil, breaks it into its fractions. This is our fractionating column. Now there's a couple of things we need to know about the fractionating column. The fractionating column is hottest at the bottom. So it's hottest down here because it's close to the heat source and the hot gases are entering the column down here. So it's going to be hottest at the bottom. That means it's going to be coolest at the very top. Coolest up here. So the fractionating column is coolest at the top. This is because it is farthest away from the heat source. Okay. So we now have our vaporized gases flowing in here. These are now gases. Most of the hydrocarbons have turned into gases and they are flowing into the column. Now, there is some of the hydrocarbons with the absolute highest boiling points, they won't evaporate in, in the burner. So what's going to happen is when they flow into the column, they are going to flow straight down as liquids and flow out the tube at the bottom. So these are substances which do not evaporate. Now, this substance tends to be called the residue. The residue. It's the bit at the very bottom that doesn't evaporate residue. Okay, so the residue, it doesn't evaporate. So it is the first thing to come off at the bottom. It doesn't evaporate. It's the first thing to flow out the bottom of the fractionating column. This would be the longest chained substances. Okay, longest chain, highest boiling point. Longest chains at the bottom. Longest chains, which means they have the strongest forces between the particles and they need the highest amount of energy to make them evaporate. So 350 to 400 degrees wasn't enough energy to make them evaporate. Why? Because they have the longest chains and they have the strongest attractive forces between the molecules and they are the longest molecules. Okay, now this is the residue it's at the bottom. Now, the different parts of the column from here on out will have different temperatures. Okay, so, at the bottom of that, at the very bottom of the column, you're talking 400 degrees or so, 400 degrees. Okay, the next level up has started to cool a bit. Okay, started to cool a bit, and you're talking here about 400 degrees. Okay, so it's cool a little bit. So the bottom one's probably 450 degrees, we'll say 450. And this next one is about 400 degrees. Okay, so what's going to happen here is, I'll keep going actually, sorry. We've got 400 degrees and then as we move up the column, it's getting cooler. So we'll say 350, up the column, 250. It's cooling more rapidly now. Then we've got around, 150 or 100 to 150. We've then got 
50 degrees or so and at the very top we're talking probably 25 degrees okay so it gets cooler as we move up the column now what's going to happen is that when the gases get into the column they're going to rise up okay so we say the gases rise up the column so the gases rise up the column so which ones keep going up the column so the ones that keep going keep going keep going are going to be the shortest chain hydrocarbons keep rising shortest chains keep rising now as the substances move up the column the ones with the highest boiling points start to evaporate because remember when a substance goes back below its boiling point it turns into back into a liquid so they start to condense so in this first one we start to get a liquid forming where it cools and condenses and the substance that comes off at this point is going to be called fuel oil fuel oil so around the 400 degrees mark fuel oil condenses and gets collected off in this pipe okay now some gases keep rising and when we reach the 350 part we get another fraction that condenses okay we call this diesel oil or diesel okay now why are these things condensing again just we need to just make sure that we understand that why are they condensing well when a gas oh gas goes below its boiling point When the gas goes below its boiling point, we know what happens to it. It condenses back to a liquid. Condenses to liquid. And in video seven, we looked at using a number line like this. Solid, liquid, gas. We had MP for melting point and BEP for boiling point. So if the boiling point is 350 degrees, well then when it goes above 350 degrees, that way it's going to turn into a gas as it's going to reach its boiling point. But also when it goes back below 350 degrees, it's going to go back to a liquid. So the ones with the highest boiling points turn into a gas at the highest temperatures, but they also turn back to a liquid at the highest temperatures. That's something that we can sometimes mix up, okay? So, uh, diesel oil is taken off at about 350. The next on the column is going to be kerosene. Kerosene then at a slightly higher temperature. Uh, at around the 150 mark, we get substances or a fraction called NAFTA. And these are really important fraction of substances because they are used in making a lot of plastics and chemicals. So even your cosmetics and stuff like that, uh, lipsticks, face powders, all that kind of stuff is made of these chemicals that come off the fractionating column in the NAFTA, um, in the NAFTA fraction. 50 then, we're talking around, we're talking about the hydrocarbons here. There's around 100 hydrocarbons and these make up what we call petrol petrol also sometimes called light gasoline so in america petrol is called gasoline and this is why it's got another name like gasoline and once we get to the very top of the substance at uh, the very top of the column you will see 25 degrees but the pipe doesn't come out to the side it goes up at the very top 
Why is this? Well, these are substances which do not condense on the column. So with 25 degrees isn't cold enough to get them to condense. So these come off the column as gases. These come off the column as gases. These are gonna be your shortest chained hydrocarbons. So they're gonna be your shortest chains. So you're talking maybe um, alkanes with a chain length of maybe two or three hydrocarbons, okay? Or two or three carbons in them, sorry. So these are gases and they are given the name together. We're talking probably propane and butane. So three carbon chain and four carbon chain, propane and butane. And they're given the name L dot P dot G. Okay, so that obviously it has three letters. So they stand for something, okay, LPG. It's a shortened version. We call this liquefied. Petroleum gas, liquefied petroleum gas. That's what LPG stands for. Now, how is it liquefied if it comes off as a gas? Well, basically what happens here is they're gonna bottle it. So if you've ever cooked with even a, camp, a little camping stove and you use a little canister of gas, if you shake the canister of gas, you will hear liquid inside, so it's liquefied. How does it become liquefied if it's a gas when it, when, you, when it burns, well, or when it comes out of the column here? Well, when you put it on a higher pressure and force it into a container, you push the particles closer together than they normally would be, and that liquefies them. That makes them behave as a liquid. So it's liquefied petroleum gas. So if you have a gas cooker, if you cook it with gas at home, it's probably liquefied petroleum gas. If you buy the bottles at the petrol station, for example, you can buy or at the hardware store, you buy a canister of gas and you'd have to change it every couple of months when it runs out. But this is bottled gas and it's used for cooking and stuff like that. Okay. Now, so these are the fractions. Okay, so let's go over them again. At the very bottom, the stuff that doesn't evaporate is collected as a liquid residue. It's called the residue. Okay. It doesn't collect as a liquid, it's collected at the bottom of the column. Next one up, it does evaporate in the burner, but it cools or it condenses at the highest temperature, so near the bottom of the column, is fuel oil. The next one up is diesel, then kerosene. What's happening to the chain length as we move up the column? One on three, one, two, three. Okay, I'm hoping that you said, as we move up the column, the chain lengths are getting shorter. Molecules are getting smaller as we move up. And this is why their boiling points are lower. Then we have the NAFTA fraction. And above that, we have petrol or like gasoline. And at the very top, we have the ones that do not condense on the column. They are collected as gases. And these are bottled as liquefied petroleum gas, LPG. The top of the column is the coolest because it's furthest away from the heat source. So, you guys do need to know the names of the fractions and you do need to know what they are used for. Now, I haven't really explained what they are used for yet. Okay, so I'm going to have to rub out some of this stuff. This here, for example, and this here. And this here. Now, So we have, sorry, just get back the green for a minute. So this is the residue. Okay, the residue is the first thing to collect at the bottom of the column. It doesn't, it doesn't condense because it doesn't actually evaporate in the burner, it just collects as a liquid. The residue, what is it used for? Well, its main use is what we call bitumen. Bitumen is essentially tar for the roads. So road surfacing. So that black tar or the black liquid that's mixed with stones to make tarmac that we make our roads with is called bitumen or tarmac. And it comes from the residue from a fractionated column. That is the function of bitumen. Fuel oil then is used as a shipping fuel. 
Okay, so fuel oil is used as shipping fuel. So fuels for big ships. Shipping fuel. It's fuel oil. And it collects near the bottom of the column. Not at the very bottom, but very near the bottom. It has the highest boiling point. One of the highest boiling points. Diesel is obviously used for cars and agriculture. So, and transportation. Cars, agriculture, transportation. So lorries, buses, tractors, all use this as a fuel for, uh, for combustion in engines, basically. Okay, kerosene is what's in the tank outside your home that heats your house. So it's heating oil. Heating. Uh, what we call domestic heating. So heating homes, heating businesses. Okay, we use kerosene. Again, we're in terms of chain length here, kerosene, we're talking somewhere in the middle. It's up the middle of the column, so it's shorter than residue, but it's much longer than gases. Okay. NAFTA is the feed, what we call the feedstock. So it's the beginning material for all chemicals and cosmetics. Okay, so chemicals and cosmetics. Petrol is mainly for cars. It's a fuel for cars. And LPG is what we call bottled gas. Bottled. Oh, sorry, I won't take my L here. Bottled gas. It's used mainly for cooking. It's used mainly for cooking. Now, the gases that come out of the fractionating column at the very top are colorless and odorless. That's, how, that's their appearance. If we were to have a sample of these coming straight out of the top of the, um, top of the fractionating column, they will be colorless and odorless. So colorless and odorless. Odorless, odor means smell and less means there isn't any. So it's odorless. Now, that's going to create a problem in terms of the safety of using these substances because if you are standing in a room, so here's you, and this bottle gas, this LPG, has leaked. We've got a little bottle of it. This is LPG. Now, if this substance is leaking, so the top of it isn't sealed properly, LPG will be building up all around you. It will be spreading to fill the room. Not only could this end up being toxic, but if you were to light a source of ignition, say a match, okay, ignition, what's going to happen? Boom. <laughs> okay, so you will cause an explosion if you get a buildup of this gas in a room or in an area and you, um, you have a source of ignition, like you go to light a cigarette or you light a match to light a candle, you will cause an explosion. So this is not very practical. So what we have to do, or what the petrochemical companies have to do to eliminate the risk of this happening is that they need to add some kind of a chemical to give it a smell. So what they do is they take a sulfur containing chemical, because sulfur uh, compounds tend to be very smelly. So if you think of the smell of things which are rotting, like a rotten egg, I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of smelling a rotten egg, but it is the substance sulfur dioxide that is responsible for the smell of things which are rotting, especially like rotting flesh or rotting um, organisms, sulfur dioxide. So we take sulfur compounds and we add them to the bottle gas, LPG, so they're added. And what they do is they give a smell. They give a smell for safety. Okay, 
So they're not actually part of the LPG. The LPG would not smell like it does if you ever get a smell of gas. Um, and everybody kind of recognizes the smell of gas. Oh, I think there's a gas leak. You're not actually smelling the gas. You are smelling these chemicals which are added artificially to give them a smell for safety. And these substances, they have a name, these sulfur containing substances. And they like to ask about this quite a lot on the exam. So here is the name. They are called mer captains. Mer captains. So mer captains are sulfur containing compounds added to LPG for safety, added to bottled gas for safety. So that's what mer captains are. They're called mer captains. Mer captains are sulfur compounds added to LPG for safety. I've repeated that quite a few times because it's very important and they do ask quite often about my captains and what they're for and what they use is. So my suggestion is if you're taking any of this down, make sure that you're taking down what my captains is. Now, it's probably a good idea to practice drawing that, okay? Um, practice drawing what I have there. I know it's a little bit messy, but um, hopefully you can make out the main parts of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let, uh, if you need to now, to pause the video and to take down anything that you want to take down. You can do that now for me. Okay, so you should be watching the video if you've taken that down, had a look at the bits you want to have a look at. You can also find it in the book, maybe it'll be a neater diagram than what I managed to draw there. Uh, but it's time to do some practice now, okay? So the first thing I want us to do is I want us to pause the, um, pause the video and roughly draw out that table for me. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to add an arrow to show the pattern of what happens for each of these uh, properties when we go between these different fractions. So we're gonna add an arrow and we're either gonna write it like this. We're either gonna write, so we've got arrows like this and we're gonna write increases or we're gonna write, sorry, that would be, that would be decreases. Decreases or increases. Okay, right. So I'll do the first one for you and then you can do the rest. So I'm going to start at the bottom. When we go from residue to chain length, sorry, when we go from talk about refinery gas down to residue in terms of chain length, what happens? So if we were to start here and we were to go refinery gas down to residue, what happens to the chain length? Well, I'm just thinking now, I know that the smallest, uh, the smallest um, substances are the ones at the top of the column because they have the lowest boiling points. So what happens actually when we go down like this, when we go down the column, is the chain length is going to increase, increases. So when we go, um, I'm just gonna take that away. When we go um, from the top to the bottom, from refinery gas down to residue, the chain length increases. So that means that the refinery gas is at the top, it is the shortest, and the residue is at the bottom, the chain length is the longest or the biggest, so it increases. All right, so you're gonna pause the video and do the next three for me now in the same way I've done that one. So pause the video now. Okay, so you should only be playing the video if you have tried to do the arrows for the next three like I have done there. Right, so refinery gas down to residue, what's going to happen? So when we move from refinery gases to residue, is the boiling point increasing or decreasing? Well, I know the refinery gases have a very low boiling point, in fact, they don't even condense on the column, the boiling points are so low. Whereas the residue, they never actually even evaporate. They flow, it flows into the column and just flows out at the bottom as a liquid. So they have the highest boiling point. So that means as I go down the group here, the boiling point is going to increase. All right, the next one, flammability. Well, you have to think back to lesson seven here, or video seven where we learned that the smallest hydrocarbons are always the most flammable. This is because they have a higher ratio of CH bonds than they do CC bonds, carbon-carbon versus carbon-hydrogen. Carbon-hydrogen are much higher energy bonds. So if the ratio of those is higher compared to carbon-carbon bonds, 
then you're going to be more flammable. That means the ones at the top are the most flammable because they are the smallest molecules. And the ones at the bottom, the residue like tarmac atom or the tarmac that we make the roads out, that, that isn't flammable. Okay. You could get it to burn if you tried really hard, but it's not flammable. It's not going to catch fire really easily like cooking gas does. Okay. So we say when we move down here, we get it decreases. We say it decreases. What about viscosity? Viscosity. So viscosity, we have already explained in this video what it is. It is how easily something can flow. So viscous substances do not flow easily. Uh, Non-viscous substances do flow easily. Okay. So, well, gases, refinery gases, gases flow really easily. So those are going to be not viscous at all. Okay. And it's the shorter chains where the interactions between the particles are lower. Those are less viscous. The ones at the bottom, the biggest molecules have much more attractions between the molecules and therefore they are more viscous. So as we move down the group, we say viscosity in, sorry, viscosity in Increases. Sorry, this is not doing what I wanted to do here. Increases. Okay, well done if you got that. If you didn't, pause the video now and fix it. Make your corrections. Okay, and it's time to do some practice questions now. Okay, so you've got questions 1 to 14 here. So pause the video now and try them questions for me. Pause the video. Okay, so you should only be watching the video now if you have paused the video and tried to do the questions. It's really important that you give them your best go yourself. Don't just wait for me to tell you the answers because you won't learn like that. Okay, so answers are coming up. If there's something there that doesn't make sense or that you don't understand, you might need to go back and watch a bit of the video again. You might even need to go back to videos eight and video seven in particular for some of these properties to figure out why the answer is the way it is. Okay, no how much in it again, just... Find a bit in the video where it's relevant. It's going to be video seven, eight, or nine. It tells you most of this stuff. Okay, and the answers are coming up now. So make sure you've tried them before I show you the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. Questions one to 14. Here are the answers. There. Yeah. Okay, so pause the video and make any corrections that you need to. Notice the way I have answered in full sentences. That is the way you should do it because it is, makes it answers the highest or your work the highest quality possible. This was a long video, but it was a really important video. Okay. And um, questions on this come up very regularly. Okay. Questions about uh, fractional distillation, the uses of the substances, things like my captains, what are they? Um, the different fractions and what they're used for, etc. So it's a really important, um, a really important video. Okay, I'll see you in the next one, guys.